Hi, I'm John Strauss, and this is our Mobile Video Basics presentation using the Vadio app for iPhones. This uses a demonstration video file. If you don't have the file, there may be still some benefit from seeing this explanation of the features and how to use the program. When you launch the app, you will get the main screen, which is mostly black and features a cutout of a person over a camera lens. Tap the files in the lower right corner. You will then be on the file manager page. Notice you can select whether to view projects, audio, images, or video. You have some choices at the bottom too, and for this lesson, we'll focus on importing video and creating a new project. To get started, select import down at the bottom. When you do that, the phone will ask where you want to select from, and for this exercise, you'll select from photo library. Select camera roll, or wherever you have your practice file. Go back to the file manager screen and select the video tab at the top. Your practice file will be displayed there. Select new project from the lower left part of the file manager screen. Select video for your project type. Give the project a name or just hit OK to accept the suggested name. The editing screen will open featuring a timeline. The program is now ready to edit your video. Select the plus sign on the lower left part of the screen. The program assumes you want to add a video clip, but if you've selected an audio track, it would assume you want to add sound. A list of the videos that you have imported into the program will appear. If you're just starting out, you'll probably just see the practice video that we just imported. Select that one. Now you see the build screen. It looks somewhat like the editing screen. On the build screen, you, you can select just the part of the video clip that you want to put into your editing timeline. There are two kinds of lines you'll see when using the program. The green line is the playhead, which marks where you are on the timeline. You can set the playhead at any point on the timeline by dragging it or tapping once on the top white portion of the timeline. If you tap twice on the top of the timeline, that, that white border, the green line turns into a set of in and out markers, blue and yellow. The in marker is blue and the out marker is yellow. The area between the two markers is selected. You'll notice that when a video clip is selected, it turns opaque. So we can select which part of the video we want to work with. You can toggle between the green line and the blue and yellow lines by tapping twice on the upper white border of the timeline. When the blue and yellow markers are selected, you can quickly move the blue one by touching the white upper border and the yellow one by tapping on the bottom. Again, to switch to the green playhead, just tap twice on the upper border. To move the green bar to another place on the timeline, just tap the upper border once, or you can drag that green playhead. To switch to the blue and yellow marker lines, tap twice on the upper border. You can also do this by tapping twice on the video itself, uh, the pictures between the white borders. To zoom in for a closer look, tap the magnifying glass down at the bottom. If you press and hold the magnifying glass, you can also see an option to zoom out. You can also zoom in and out by putting two fingers on the timeline. You'll see uh, blue marker circles under your fingertips and either spreading your fingers apart to zoom in or pinch them together to zoom out. Video editing begins with selecting clips and putting them in the order that you like. In this case, we want to select the interview with the student which is at the beginning of the practice file that you've just imported. There are several ways to do this. Here's a simple one. Start by selecting the entire practice video. Double tap the picture part of the, type line, of, of the timeline between the two white borders. The entire timeline should now be opaque. At this point, the blue line will be at the beginning of the build screen, the timeline there. It'll be on the left side. If it's not, try again by tapping twice in the part of the video that is not selected, uh, that is not opaque. This will select the whole clip. With the whole clip selected and the blue line at the beginning of the clip, you can move the yellow line, the out marker, wherever you want by tapping once on the bottom white border.
The yellow line should appear where you have tapped, and if you hold your finger on the bottom border, you can move the yellow line wherever you want. You can move the blue line by putting your finger on the top white border. The area between the blue and yellow lines is now, as we said, selected. It'll be opaque compared with the rest of the video. In the build screen, you place your finger and hold it on a part of the video that is selected. You'll see a small square appear under your finger. You can then drag the selection down to the area below the video. This is called the build screen because if you want, you could build your video by selecting one shot or another and dragging each one down to the lower part of the screen. In this example, we're just going to start with one shot, the interview with the student. Again, we should start with the entire practice clip selected. That means all of the picture part of the build screen timeline will be opaque, and you'll see the blue line at the beginning. The blue line shows where your selection begins, and it should begin at the start of this clip. To pick the end of the shot, put your finger on the lower white border and scrub along, kind of drag your finger along. You'll see the video playing at the speed that you move your finger. Now the app is a little tricky because of the small size of the screen and the fact that it responds to touch, it's easy to mix up the commands. Don't be discouraged by this. Like Word and every program, it gets much easier with practice. If you get off track, just go back a couple of steps. Note that the numbers on the white border correspond to the timing of the video, so that 1 colon 0 0 means one minute from the beginning. By moving your finger along the lower white border, which moves the yellow outline, uh, the, the out part, where we're saying that's the end of the selection, you'll see the student's interview lasts just over a minute. Select the student's interview by putting the blue line at the beginning of the clip and the yellow line at around 1.08, uh, one minute and eight seconds. You can zoom in by touching the magnifying glass if you want to. When the interview is properly selected, you'll know because it's between the blue and yellow lines and the pictures are opaque. Place your finger on the selected part of the clip until the small box appears beneath your finger on the screen. Then drag it down to the first box below the timeline. You can add this new clip to the editing screen by pressing the check mark in the circle in the lower right part of the screen. When you do that, the editing screen appears. Notice that it also has a timeline, but looks a little different from the build screen with a black bar beneath the video, for example. Play the video clip by pressing the play button on the lower left part of the screen. Pressing the same button will stop the playback. Notice that the icon changes from a sideways triangle to a square after you hit play. Those are sort of the universal signals, right? Symbols. Let's talk about adding B-roll. Up to this point, we've only done what every video editing program does, selecting clips that you want and putting them in the order that you want. But web video is especially helpful when we use the pictures to illustrate what our interview subject is saying. Pictures placed over another soundtrack are known as B-roll, which is an old motion picture term. A role, they would say, is the student interview you've put into the editing screen timeline. We'll use B roll to show what he's talking about and also introduce some visual variety so that we don't, we don't just have a video of a single person talking. Uh, that's sometimes derisively known as a talking head. First, let's figure out where we want the B roll to start. For visual variety, it's a good idea to start a new clip when the person speaking changes subjects. Generally, we want to keep our shots to about two to four seconds, unless there's some movement or other reason to run uh, one longer. That's just a general, it's not even a rule, it's just a good idea. In this case, go to the beginning of the clip by pressing the black, the, what we might say is the back button, in the middle of the lower part of the screen, amid the other commands, and just to the right of the magnifying glass. If you play the clip, note that his first sentence lasts just under six seconds and ends with different stuff. That might be where we want to cut away to another shot to show what he's talking about, or just to introduce some visual variety. We're going to start the B-roll at that point. 
To do that, we need to select the second video track by double tapping the black space just above the timeline. You'll see a new track open up above the main video track that we've been working with. By double tapping the white border above this new video track, you can select either the green playhead or the blue and yellow markers. If you get one of those and want to switch to the other, just double tap on that upper border as we learned before. Place the green playhead in this second video track just before the six second mark. You can do that by double tapping at that point on the border or by placing your finger on the green bar and dragging it there. Now it's time to add the new shot. Tap the plus sign on the lower left part of the screen. You get the index of your videos. You may only have one, just as you did before. And just as you did before, select that video by tapping it once. The build screen appears as it did before. Now it's time to select your first B-roll shot. Double tap on the video to select the whole file again. Find the place where you want the shot to begin by touching the upper white border with your finger and holding it there. The blue in line will appear and you can move it along the video by dragging your finger. If when you try to move the blue line the whole video moves, then just place your finger on the upper white border again and hold it there. This will give you control of the blue line. If you want to get to, if you want to move the video along the timeline, just touch the video, the picture part of the video in the center and hold that and then you can drag it along the time, timeline. You move it, move the whole timeline. You'll know this because a blue box will appear just to the right of your finger. Uh, that is to say, the, you'll, you'll know that uh, you've got the um, blue in marker going when you get this blue box appear just to the right of your finger, showing the portion of the video you're examining. Move your finger along and you'll see the images and select where you want this shot to begin. Remember that you can zoom in for a better view by tapping the magnifying glass at the bottom. If you need to zoom out, you can hold that magnifying glass and you'll see um, an option to zoom out. Move the end point of your selection, the blue line, to just after the 2 minute and 30 second mark on the video. This is a shot of the student working, and it'll go good with the audio track. Select the out point, the yellow line, by pressing the yellow, I should say the lower white border, until the yellow appears. Notice that you're touching, when you touch the upper white border, you get the blue line. When you touch the lower white border, you get the yellow line. This uh, yellow uh, line is where your new video clip will end. Move your finger along the white timeline, dragging the yellow line with you to the out point that you would like. And we just want a short selection here, you know, a few seconds, four or five seconds. To see it better, you may need to zoom in with the magnifying glass a couple of times. You need to zoom in so there's enough room for you to press your selection and drag it to the bottom of your build screen the way you did before. So go ahead and do that. Drag your selection to the bottom. When you press and hold the selection, you'll see the small square appear beneath your finger. You just drag that down to the box there below it. When the selection appears as a block at the bottom of the screen, tap the check mark on the lower right part of the screen. This moves the clip to the editing screen. The new clip is placed wherever your green playhead line was left. Remember, that's the, the point of the playhead is it marks a spot on the video. And what you've done is uh, you opened up that, that second video track and you put your playhead where you want this new video to go. Remember that you uh, uh, wanted this just before the six second mark there on the second or top video track. At this time, you should have two video tracks. The student's interview is in the first, or the bottom track, and the B-roll is in the second track, at the top, starting just before the six-second mark. As before, go to the beginning of the timeline by pressing the back key at the middle bottom part of the screen. That's the one with an arrow pointing backwards. Uh, if you press and hold that, by the way, you'll see other options. You can uh, go to the other end, the uh, move forward or move along one part of the selection at a time. Play your project by pressing the play button 
at the bottom left part of the screen. See how we did. You should see the student talking as you did before, but at about six seconds or the end of his first sentence, you should now see the new shot of him working or whatever shot it is that you picked. Now videos look best when the shots are timed just right. To look at your edit and see if you like the timing, double tap the upper white border on the video track. If you get the blue and yellow markers, double tap the border again and you'll get the green playhead. Press the play button and note where your B-roll begins. If you like, you can move that clip so it starts earlier or later. To move a piece of video on the timeline, tap it with your finger and hold. You should see an outline appear around the video briefly and then go away. And at that point, you can drag the video to wherever you want it in the timeline. And there's this idea of moving the whole timeline versus moving a clip, as you just did there. You can move the whole timeline, that is, you want to go and look at the back, you know, some other part of it, you by pressing on the video track itself, the pictures, and moving your finger. Again, if you press and hold the video, you'll see the outline brighten briefly, and moving your finger will move the video clip to where you want it along the timeline. This is a little different. Instead of pressing and holding it, you just press it and then immediately start moving. This is what we mean by the difference in touch. This is very context sensitive because we're dealing with such a small user interface. Remember that if, uh, like with other programs, if you make a mistake, you can step backwards. In this case, by pressing the undo command at the bottom of the editing screen. This is the fourth icon from the left and looks like a circle with an arrow on it. Tap it once and it undoes the last command you executed. Press and hold and you'll see an option to redo something. Uh, in other words, you can step backwards, but if you decide, well, I did want that stuff, you can redo it, add it back in. So congratulations, you made your first real video edit. You've used B-roll to add visual variety to your piece, which is huge, okay? Well, like every app, this program can crash. It usually recovers very well when it's relaunched, but still, it's a good idea to save your work every few minutes. To do that, click the Home button at the bottom right, and then Yes when asked if you want to save the project. Then, just reopen the project from the File Manager screen and keep on editing. Let's talk about publishing your work and the difference between project files and video files. When you save your project, you still have a couple of steps to go to before others can see it. Assume you've finished editing. The next step is to render the video file. To do this, start from the editing screen and look for the save icon that includes a downward pointing arrow. Think of it as sort of downloading the file. It should be next to the question icon, which is in the lower right part of the iPhone screen. When you press the save icon, you will be asked whether uh, render to video or just choose audio. Of course, let's choose video, render to video. Then you'll get a screen with some choices, most of which you can leave as they are. And when you've confirmed these settings, you almost never need to change anything. You touch export up at the top. The system will ask you to wait while it renders the final video file. This finished work will then appear under the video tab on your file management page. Remember that? Let's talk about saving and sending. After you've rendered your project as a completed video file, it's a good idea to save it to your camera roll so that you have a backup copy. The camera roll is where when you take pictures of your friends and that sort of thing, they're stored in the camera roll. So we've made this video and it's in the Vadio program. We want to copy that over into the main part of your phone at the camera roll. So to do that, go to the video tab from your file manager screen. Now you have two videos, right? The demonstration file that we worked with first as our raw material and the finished video that you edited from that. Select the finished video and you'll get some choices that include play, rename, edit, extract audio, and send. Select send and you'll get another set of choices. First, choose to camera roll. The system will take a moment to copy your file there, which makes sure you have an extra copy in case something happens to the original, which is stored in the Vadio program.
Note that from that page, you can also send the project to YouTube. And that's the beauty of this program. You can go from raw video to being published on the web in moments. And you can use Photosync to transfer the file from your camera roll onto any nearby computer as needed.